Hello, my beautiful friends. I am so happy to be sitting here with you to chat about the Virgo full moon. This is a really, really potent full moon. And I think in some surprising ways that maybe you aren't expecting, um, but ways that bring us back to some root truths that I think can really help us set up for the astrological new year to close out this Pisces season because it is happening just the last few days of Pisces season, the last few days before the sun moves into Aries. So this full moon is very useful for allowing things to culminate. But I think you may be surprised by some of the things we're going to talk about today and how I want you to approach that or how I kind of feel that this Virgo full moon is really working with us. So I'm really excited to share some of those insights and some of those things that have come through as I sat and really felt through this full moon and prepared for this chat. So Let's get into it. This full moon is going to continue our conversation with what we just went through with the Pisces new moon. We're going to continue conversations around release, transformation, transmutation, skin shedding, relaxing into a new form, trusting our own intuition. And this full moon, obviously full moons are often about culmination, release, letting go, seeing things in their full light, understanding what's come to completion. And the first thing I want to say about this full moon, which is at 27 degrees of Virgo with opposing the sun at 27 degrees of Pisces, is that we want to reconsider how we think about Virgo energy. Um, If you happen to be a Virgo or have strong Virgo energy, you're a little bit more in the know. But I think pop astrology often discusses Virgo energy in terms of the neuroticism, the perfectionism, the being on schedule, being the only one that can do it right, which I love a good joke. Believe me, it's it's fun to have fun with these archetypes and to play with them. But sometimes I think it's very easy to forget the true core meaning of Virgo and how we work with this archetype, how we work with this energy. This is about being whole in ourselves, feeling whole in ourselves, not because we're striving to be a hundred different people for everybody else in the world, not because we're striving to be, you know, some form of what you're supposed to look like when you walk out the door in society, Um, Not because you're trying to please everybody, but because you're just at peace in yourself. And that's what Virgo energy is really about. This is the goddess that is whole and integral in herself. So it's about being at peace with we are in these bodies that have their own mysterious processes going on that we're always kind of trying to figure out. Living in a body is a very interesting experience. It gets, it keeps getting more interesting, Um, but also that we are this unseen energy that's constantly communicating and connecting and playing and that these two things are really happening and finding more peace with these two things happening and all of it working together. But it's even more about not trying to be everything to everybody, not trying to leave ourselves constantly in the pursuit of fitting in or doing things the way that they're supposed to be done, the cookie cutter way, and just coming home. So that's what Virgo energy is really about. So a full moon is going to ask us to sit with ourselves. And that is one of the first things I want to say about this full moon. Now, this full moon, the main aspect that is happening is that it is going to be trining Pluto and Capricorn. Pluto is associated with power, transformation, um, very deep, strong energies. Um, And yes, a lot of people have, I think, a bit of a traumatic feeling toward Pluto. If you happen to be a Capricorn, I think you have some of your own feelings about this energy. But Pluto, for me, we just want to approach Pluto's energy in a way that is supportive. And there's a couple of ways that I think it's important to explore this trine, this full moon, explore the energy, both of a full moon in Virgo, closing out a very potent Pisces season, and a full moon that is working in concert with Pluto. And also a full moon that is not that many degrees away from Neptune, the big dreamer, the big foggy fantasy energy that can sometimes expand us into some very interesting places. So one thing, first thing, 
we want to talk about transformation, transmutation, end of an astrological, Western astrological year, the closeout, all of that. So often we approach the idea of transforming, becoming from a place of trying to get away from ourselves. And it's no shade. Um, We're often taught in our consumer culture that transformation is going to be things like weight loss, makeup products, having a a wardrobe transformation, um, having the better apartment, somehow getting away from our awkwardness, getting away from our (laughs) simple just beingness is somehow going to bring us relief. And of course, there is positive changes that can happen. There are transformations. We can process trauma through our bodies and let it release. That's a beautiful transformation. We can work with self-compassion and to heal shame from past trauma. That's a beautiful process. We can improve our communication and we can get better at communicating with our loved ones and our coworkers and with the world. And we can become more conscientious. We can do a lot of things that are, I think, positive transformational things that do change how we move through the world and how we maybe even appear to the world. However, there's also, there's that truth. And the most powerful thing we can do is just be okay with where we are now, the way we look now, the way we feel now, and just who we are. We don't need to keep running from the awkwardness of living in a body and sometimes saying the wrong thing or just feeling awkward in the situation or not knowing what the next step is. We don't need to run away from the fact that maybe we haven't made peace with every single person in our lives and maybe we don't know how to process a grief or an overwhelming wave of something. Maybe we don't know, you know, what that's supposed to look like. Maybe we're not in some Zen perfect state of mind that can carry us through anything, no matter what life throws at us. Maybe we don't have that. But there's this power in sitting with wherever we are and not trying to change it, transform it away, transform ourselves away from ourselves. That actually allows for us to do the true transforming, do the true releasing. But The first step is to be with ourselves. That's actually transformational. Our consumer culture, this is something that I'm very passionate about, and it's not like I'm at the forefront of this. This has been being said for many, many years. But I'm very passionate about our consumer culture makes it appear that if we can just morph ourselves enough, we won't feel pain anymore. We won't... (laughs) be confused anymore. The awkwardness will go away. The the uncertainty will go away. The mystery will go away. And we'll finally just have the answers. And it's very subconscious. It's not always like this conscious thing that we're thinking that storyline in our heads. And I think the true empowerment that this full moon is trying to bring back to our minds and to our process is that not needing to buy our way into a sense of security, not needing to buy our way into a sense of worthiness, not needing to erase our just unique look and feel in the world is a really, really important part of that. Now, the other part of this is that with this full moon trining Pluto, we have this idea of empowerment or power. That word often comes up when we're working with Pluto, this idea of power. And so often we're taught power is kind of this concept of domination or like electromagnetism where it's like people just can't get away from this energetics, right? That's like often how we talk about or think about power just kind of on a basic level. I think for me, empowerment and power looks very different when we're really in connection with ourselves. It's not going to look like dominating a room of people or dominating resources or having everything or any of those things. True empowerment is going to feel much more like it's going to feel a lot quieter, a lot more peaceful, a lot less certain and cookie cutter and formed and perfected. And we're each going to feel our empowerment in different ways. I think so often we've been taught that there's this, there's this amount of power that's in the world and certain people get it. 
And if we just, you know, scramble our way, we might get a piece of that power pie. And once again, this isn't something that we're consciously thinking, most of us, some of us probably are. Um, but a lot of us aren't thinking this way. But this is kind of how we're taught. There's this finite amount of power. And we all should be wanting to get it. And only some people are going to get it. And everybody else is boring or weak or uninteresting or whatever. Um, flat, incapable. But for me, what I've realized is that formula of trying to get to the top of a pyramid, trying to get to the top of a hierarchy, trying to, is, is the actual flat thing. It's the actual boring, incompetent thing. Um, when we are in true power, power is going to be about peace within ourselves, not struggling so much to run from ourselves, to run from wherever we are, whoever we are, whatever we are. It's going to be allowing ourselves to just pursue our own sense of peace, which is going to be quiet. It's going to be soft. It's going to be simple. It's going to be little ingredients that are unique to you. And so I think, you know, this full moon, there's a lot of these power words that come power, transformation, these big words. And so often we think about these huge releases, these huge shedding away so that we're suddenly somewhere, somewhere else and something else and somebody else. But I am kind of saying the exact opposite. Transformation and power are going to come from just being with ourselves. So let's pull a couple cards for this full moon. Um, I feel really passionate about this message and this energy. I think it never, I never get tired of hearing messages like this and they always soothe my heart whenever I hear any of my teachers or writers or thinkers or poets that share a message kind of in this vein. I feel like life is good again. And I can't remember why it's good. And, and I think it just brings us back to those basics. Um, how are you all feeling as we close out this astrological year and this Pisces season and the, the potent energies we have been working with? <laughs> Seven of Cups. That's pretty perfect for uh, this Neptune very close to the full moon or um, very close to the sun. So uh, very close to opposing this full moon. Let's pull one more card. King of Cups. Yeah. Yeah, we're still working with a lot of watery energy during this full moon. We still are going to have Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, and the sun in Pisces during this full moon in Virgo. The The full moon it's, and then the moon itself is a very watery energy, but it is going to be anchored in this Virgo energy. So that's going to be very helpful, I think, for getting perspective and getting to kind of just anchor in and feel through a little bit. But the message here is quite strong because these cards are about not running to look for external answers, external senses of safety, external um, approval, whatever we're dreaming of or whatever, wherever we are in our lives, right? These cards are about, once again, like I said, Virgo energy at its core is about feeling whole right here, right now in this present moment, which is a lifelong practice. Don't get me wrong. It is. Um, but it's not about splintering ourselves. It's not about scrambling for the answers everywhere outside of ourselves. Um, like I like to say, you know, we have to develop a sense of safety in ourselves because nobody else can give that to us. And we all deserve to live safe, peaceful lives in safe, peaceful environments. Both things are true, but these cards, let's, let's focus here, Sarah, <laughs> focus. Um, seven of cups. So often this card, I think kind of flummoxes people a little bit. Sevens and tarot are about a moment of challenge a little bit, like a moment of feeling a little like you don't know quite what the next right move is. And for me, the seven of cups is kind of about going in 
when we're uncomfortable with ourselves, or maybe we have a thought or a thing that's happening and looking at those thoughts and looking at those dreams and looking at those like different energies that are floating through. I like to think about kind of picking up each of these cups, feeling it in our hands, kind of like in our mind's eye or like in our energetic field. Like how does it feel to pick up each one of these thoughts, each one of these dreams, each one of these, these feelings or emotions that are moving through me? Does it feel like it's true? Does it feel like it is holding me or does it feel kind of poisonous? Does it feel like I am shattering myself? to, to be something for everybody else? Does it feel like it's something I want because I'm supposed to want it and not because I actually want it? Right. But I've just been told for so long from every movie, every TV show and every, every lesson at school that I need to want this thing over here. And I'm realizing that when I pick this cup up, it hurts. Right. So seven of cups is about sitting with where we are right now and feeling where we are right now trying to pick up those cups. This is a really great card when I see this to journal. Notice the thoughts that are coming up. Notice the dreams that are coming up and get really honest with them. Now, King of Cups, I often think of as the the sovereign of emotion. And what I mean by that is this is somebody who, this is an energy that comes up when we are being asked to be the witness to our emotions. Allow them to give us the information we are wanting and longing for, yearning for, without feeling that those emotions are just who we are and that they're just going to take us with them forever. And this is just my identity. The King of Cups is really about the mastery of being able to witness our full emotions, allow them to move through, allow them to give us information, allow them to do their work, which can be really scary. I get it. It can be very intimidating if there's something that We've been kind of putting off feeling through for a little while. It can feel so scary to begin to sit down and just be with ourselves as we are now and hear whatever it is that wants to come up. But the King of Cups is a reminder that we can handle that. That not only can we handle that, it will bring us closer to ourselves and to our sense of peace and to our sense of ability to be here in the physical again moving through life in a way that feels true and empowered and kind. And these cards are both saying that our empowerment comes not from running, not from seeking, 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 but just from coming home. That's it. That's all this Virgo moon is about. (laughs) Um, And I just feel like, you know, this is a really great full moon. This is going to be my kind of my final point here. This is a really great full moon to think about and just take some time to assess like your dreams, your goals, your thoughts, anything, and think about if it's really you or if it's something you're forcing on yourself or carrying around or forcing yourself to be, or even the transformation you think you need to have to really question it and to maybe find out that you don't need as much transformation as you might think. You don't need so much running as you might think. You don't need so many accomplishments as you might think. And that there may be greater peace available to you right now than maybe you've let yourself feel for a little while. And that's all that we're asking for here during this Virgo full moon. Um, I would love to see you over on Patreon. That's where I do the activation for this full moon. So really how to work with it, how to kind of tap into some of the, the themes that I was just talking about with being here with ourselves now, with taking care of our nervous systems, feeling hard feelings, all of that. So we are going to go over that just a few days before the full moon. I like to do those. Um, we also do weekly chats and just cover all the astrology of the month. So I'd love to see you over there. You can also find me on the only true Sarah Verba. Yes, there are always dupes and I'm aware of them, but I just have to trust you all to be the compassionate, good self-parenting, lovely, beautiful people that I know you are to take care of yourselves and be aware. There's just the one handle and I know that that you know. Um, and also you can find me on my website or my email. So I'll leave all the links below so you know where to connect with me. I love you, my dear, dear friends. Have a gorgeous full moon in Virgo and we will talk very, very soon. <laughs>